In this lecture, we will find out total energy of three different signals and we will also check if they are energy signal or not. You can read the question here. Calculate total energy of the following signals. This is the first signal, second signal and the third signal. This particular lecture is the part one, part one of solved problems based on energy of continuous time signals. Let's move to the signal number one, which is x one t. It is equal to e raised to power minus a t u t, where a is greater than zero. Now, based on this a, we are having three different cases. This particular case is case number one in which a is greater than zero, or we can say a is positive. We will also discuss two more cases in which a is less than zero and a is equal to zero respectively. So let's start with this case, case number one. I hope you already know how to get the graph of signal x one t. You can first find out the graph of e raised to power minus a t where a is greater than zero. I will help you to get the graph quickly. e raised to power minus a t when a is greater than zero. This means this power here will always be negative, will always be negative when t is greater than zero and it will always be positive when t is less than zero. So we will discuss the two cases one by one. I will first discuss the case in which the power will be negative. As power is negative, we can write e raised to power minus a t as one by e raised to power a t. Now we can increase the time because t is greater than zero. So we will go on increasing the time. And when you increase the time, this means e raised to power a t will also increase. And as e raised to power a t, which is denominator is increasing, the whole signal will decrease. So let's see how the plot will look for this signal from zero to infinity. When t is equal to zero, from here you can see, we will have e raised to power zero and it will be equal to one. So when t is equal to zero, the signal will be equal to one. And when you increase t up to infinity, the signal will decrease exponentially like this. And when t is very large, it will almost be equal to zero. Now what will happen when t is less than zero and you go on making t more negative? In that scenario, e raised to power minus a t will increase. So the plot will look like this. So I hope you now understand how to get the plot of e raised to power minus a t when a is greater than zero. But here we are multiplying e raised to power minus a t by u t and we already know u t which is the unit step signal is equal to zero from minus infinity to zero and it is equal to one from zero to infinity. So from minus infinity to zero, when you multiply u t with this signal, which is e raised to power minus a t, we will have zero. So e raised to power minus a t u t will be zero from minus infinity to zero and from zero to infinity, it will remain same because multiplying one will not change the signal. So this is the final waveform and now we will obtain the total energy. The calculation of total energy we will do by using the formula integration from minus infinity to infinity mod xt square dt. You can see the waveform of the signal. It will remain same even after taking the mod. So there is no use of mod and we will directly square the signal. We will have integration minus infinity to infinity e raised to power minus a t u t square d t. Now from minus infinity to zero signal is equal to zero and from zero to infinity signal is equal to e raised to power minus a t u t will be one from zero to infinity u t is equal to one whole square d t. So in next step, we will have integration, integration zero to infinity e raised to power minus two a t dt. And we already know integration of e raised to power a t 
e raised to power a t is equal to 1 by a e raised to power a t and if it is definite integral with lower limit as x and upper limit as y we will have x and y as the lower and upper limits here the lower limit is 0 upper limit is infinity and the integration will be equal to minus 1 by 2a e raised to power minus 2at 0 infinity now there is one important thing to understand a is positive so while putting the upper and lower limits we need to take care of this we will have minus 1 by 2a inside the bracket e raised to power minus a into infinity when you put t equal to infinity 2 into infinity will be same as infinity and when a is positive this means this power will be minus infinity minus e raised to power 0 so e raised to power 0 is equal to 1 and e raised to power minus infinity a is positive so a into infinity will be infinity and this negative sign will be there so e raised to power minus infinity will be equal to 0 so finally we will have the total energy equal to the total energy E is equal to 1 by 2A and as you can see this is finite phi night we can say that the signal X1T is energy signal there is no need to calculate the average power because when energy is finite this implies the average power P is equal to 0 so this is all for the first question but as I have already told you there are two more cases in the first question when A is less than 0 and when A is equal to 0. I will explain the two cases here quickly. Case number 2 signal is equal to E raised to power minus A T U T and this time A is less than 0 this means negative and we will have the plot which will be different from this one the plot will be different when t is equal to 0 signal will have value equal to 1 and on increasing the time the signal will go on increasing exponentially so if you compare the two plots you will find instead of exponentially decreasing signal we have exponentially increasing signal and in this case when you calculate the total energy the total energy you will find it is equal to infinity you can use the formula for the calculation or you can use the simple logic here the signal is rising exponentially and we already know the total energy is equal to the area under the mod xt square plot the modulus of this signal will be same and when you square it you will have the signal with even larger area so the area when you calculate from minus infinity to infinity it is going to be infinity so we can say that energy is equal to infinity and in this scenario the signal will not be the energy signal now you can do the third case by yourself the third case case number three in which signal is equal to e raised to power minus at the ut and a is equal to zero put a equal to 0 here and you will get ut so signal is simple the unit step signal and you already know the waveform of the unit step signal it is like this from 0 to infinity it is equal to 1 and from minus infinity to 0 it is equal to 0 now you may use the formula for the total energy or you may use the simple logic as we already know energy is equal to area under mod xt square graph here xt is equal to ut find mod xt square you will get the same plot 1 multiplied by 1 will not give anything different than 1 so you will have the same plot find the area how you can find the area it is a rectangle which is having 1 as the height and infinity as the width so area is equal to 1 into infinity which is equal to infinity and as area is the area of mod xt square infinity will be the total energy so again the total energy is equal to infinity and this signal here is not an energy signal
because for energy signals the total energy must be finite so there is one important conclusion we have drawn here if you compare the three waveforms you will find the last two waveforms are not infinite converging signals here the signal is not infinite converging here also the signal is not infinite converging but the first signal is infinite converging so you can write down this point the energy is finite for infinite converging signal or graph so this is one important conclusion we have drawn from the first question now let's solve the second problem in which signal is x2t and it is equal to x1 minus t so we have obtained this signal by performing the time reversal so we can check if there is any effect of time reversal on the total energy so let's quickly draw the graph of signal x2t the graph will look like this when t is equal to 0 the signal is equal to 1 and when t is decreasing the signal will also decrease and as we have already seen for infinite converging signals the energy is going to be finite so we can say that the signal is energy signal because it is infinite decreasing or infinite converging signal now let us calculate the total energy the total energy is going to be same because if you compare the area of mod xt square in these two plots you will find it is same so energy will remain same which is equal to 1 by 2a you can calculate the energy using the formula so this is the answer of the second problem and we have seen there is no effect no effect of time reversal on the total energy of signal let's see the third problem in which signal is x3t and it is equal to x1t plus x2t so add these two graphs and you will have the graph of signal x3t the graph of signal x3t will look like this okay these two sides left hand side and the right hand side are identical when t is equal to 0 signal x3t is equal to 1 now there is one property of the total energy when you add two signals the energy of the two signals will be added this is the waveform of signal x1t and energy of the signal is equal to 1 by 2a this is the waveform of signal x2t and energy of this signal is equal to 1 by 2a so energy of signal x3t will be 1 by 2a plus 1 by 2a which is equal to 1 by a so this is the answer of the third problem and in this problem we have seen another property i will quickly write down this property if there is signal x1t having the total energy as e1 signal x2t is there having the total energy as e2 and signal x3t is there which is equal to x1t plus x2t and the energy of signal x3t is let's say e3 then e3 is equal to e1 which is energy of signal x1t plus e2 which is energy of signal x2t so this is the another property and if you want to calculate the total energy using the formula you can calculate for this signal also you will get it is equal to 1 by a so this is all for this lecture we have derived few important results which we can use directly while solving the questions in the coming presentations we will solve few more examples related to the energy of continuous time signals